We are in the Salt Lake City International Airport and it's about five in the morning. We just made it past the security checkpoint. And uh, first thing Brian says, he gets all bright. He says they got Starbucks. This kid. Double thumbs up guys. It's 5.03 on the nose in the AM, which means Starbucks is open. So it's a good way to start just. Flight. They just barely open. We're heading to New Mexico. He's got an antelope tag, and then Casey and I will be out hunting elk with our bow. Brian and I are traveling today. We're flying, getting a rental truck, and then we'll hunt antelope and then meet up with Casey once we get there. Casey's gonna pick up the jumping jack trailer and some other gear at my house today and head down to the Gila and set up camp. We made it to New Mexico. We're in Albuquerque Airport. Just got everything loaded up. This is what Brian and I are taking uh, for his antelope hunt. We've got a gun, camera gear, backpacks, clothes, of course, the Yeti cooler for uh, when he bags a big buck antelope. Sweet! With a little rap music. Just like you like, Eric. Oh, yeah, dude. Bump it. Bass. Turn up the bass. This is going to be fun. It's like a airplane slash road trip to an antelope hunt where Brian has hunted before. You shot him? How many antelope you shot here? Killed the three, three bucks. It's uh, actually a good friend of ours, Cody. One of his coworkers, uh, they've had it in their family for a number of years. So it's uh, got a lot of history to it and it's a pretty cool place. I think once you guys actually see the, uh, the ranch, uh, it's, it's literally in the most remote place in Northeast New Mexico. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty neat area where Mostly just antelope live and rattlesnakes, I guess. So we'll be on the lookout for rattlesnakes. We'll be watching for rattlesnakes. Too bad Casey's not with us. <laughs> that guy hates snakes. To the ranch we go and to the grocery store because I need some food. I feel like I'm starving to death. Well, we just got to the gun range. So since we're here and this is, this is only 20 minutes out of the way, we just want to double check the rifle, make sure it's shooting good. So we're going to go set up with everybody out here, this madhouse, and go blazing make sure it's still on so you already got your earplugs in that's right you gotta be you gotta be prepared when you come to a live shooting range the line is hot we uh just showed up to the ranch house it's a little later than we thought. The, the drive was uh, a little longer than we expected and we had a tragedy with BMAX iPhone. We went to take a really cool picture of the sunset out the window, blew out of his hand and just demolished his iPhone. Whatever you do, don't try to take a photo traveling at a high rate of speed. Approximately 75 miles an hour. She didn't make it. <laughs> This place is cool though, this little old ranch house way out here in like northeastern New Mexico. Give you guys a quick tour. When you walk in from the front porch, you got the kitchen. Whew. See, everything is like old school. Stove, washer in here, little dining area. B Mac getting all his gear ready. We've got uh, the backpack, camera, spotting scope, nice living space, hide-a-bed. Pretty cool little uh, ranch house out here. Bathroom equipped with shower and bath and uh, two bedrooms. So it looks like B-Mac is taking the master suite and uh, I'll be in this room, which I love this rug. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Did you guys just see that? Oh, dude, a mouse. Whoa, dude. Buddy, oh my gosh, there's a mouse in my room. I got a friend already. <laughs> we have a mouse problem, dude. He's in my bedroom. Shut up. No, serious. Did you see him? Heck yeah, I saw him. What? I was taking some video of that room and he ran across the carpet. Is he out here now? Yeah, he's out here. I think he's up in that red, tree, uh, red chair. What? Okay, recon, extermination in full effect. Oh, we got him, dude. Oh, shoot, he's trying to sneak out of there. Come on. 
There he is! Whoa! He's wild! That's good snake food. I feel bad, dude. Like, it's a stupid rodent mouse, and I don't want to kill it. Most people would be like, shoot it, kill it, trap it. I just want to let it outside. It's a... Uh, let, let him out. He's a lucky mouse. Dude, walk him way away. Yeah. Like I said, most people will just kill him, but I mean, I'm sure he will be back. It's uh, the first day of the antelope hunt. We saw some great antelope bucks today, and look who showed up. Oh, 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 time warp, time warp. <laughs> look who's here. Listen, fellers. It's amazing what what you'll find on the side of a road in New Mexico. It is amazing. Sometimes you'll find a Casey Levere. Guys, we are in Northeast New Mexico. I had to think about where I was at because I spent 18 hours yesterday in my truck driving down here. I was headed for the southwest corner of New Mexico because me and Eric have elk tags down there that start in three days. So I was going to go down there and scout while Eric and Brian came up here and uh, Brian had an antelope tag and they were going to film an antelope hunt. I got to about halfway here and they called me and said they found an extra tag that one of these ranchers had that wanted to sell. Excuse my friends, I'm here with my good friends. The one's taking a leak right now. Hey, we're trying to shoot. Stop it for one sec. Anyways, so I ran over here. I got here at like two in the morning. It took me 18 hours. And uh, this is our first night hunting. I really have tonight and tomorrow to hunt and that's it. So we just stopped though. We just got on the ranch, so stopped, glassed up there. Beautiful buck, man, beautiful. So we're gonna go uh, try to put a stock on him real quick. It should be fun. Hard thing with the antelope, they're really easy to spot. Go out all day and look for them and find them. They're just hard to get close to. They have their eyesight is amazing. So we're trying to keep this hill blocking us. I think they're right up this little canyon here. So we're just trying to keep some, some elevation so we can sneak around this hill and they won't see us because they see you from a thousand yards. They take off. I don't practice that enough. This is a good tip for me. If you guys want to pay attention, pay attention. I'm really good at going out all summer long, setting my rifle in a sled, shooting from a bench. I'm great. I shoot six, seven, eight hundred yards. I do not shoot in real hunting situations enough. I do with my bow. My rifle's different. I always feel like if it's on, it's on. Shooting a rifle is just like, Anything else, you have to learn it, you have to practice it, and you have to keep good at it. There's a perfect example. Two, just over 200 yards, freehand, off my knee. Air ball. 
Oh wow. Well, if you learn, I'll be back tomorrow. Good thing is, I missed completely. Not a uh, hair was shed. All I can really say right now is what a beautiful walk back to the truck. Look at this sunset. Look at this. Look at these two. Wow, we just had an experience. It was fun. That's all I'm gonna say. We got it all on here. tag from a good friend of ours and well, it's kind of the way New Mexico rolls is you can draw a tag or you could purchase a landowner tag and then you get assigned a ranch so we're um, kind of in the middle of nowhere but it's really cool we're standing at an awesome ranch house and there's antelope all over the place so when we woke up this morning they were running through the backyard basically but uh, we're out on the first kind of stock of the morning and there's some buck and some does over this rise so we're gonna go sneak in on them and see if uh, they are worth taking a closer look at and maybe even shooting. close to them so oftentimes you gotta look through these spotting scopes and they just can be very difficult to judge but this one looks like he's he's not bad he's kind of a narrow framed buck but carries his prongs which are the points that kind of come off the, the front of the horns pretty high usually if you carry your prongs high that's a good thing for scoring purposes anyways but we're more interested in just finding a, a good representative mature buck more than anything so After looking over them a little bit, I just don't think that's one that I'd want to pursue just yet. Younger buck and he's got some years to grow. He's doing a good job though because he's got a slug of does with him. ranch we're gonna try to redeem ourselves from last night the uh, land, ranch owner told us that there's a big buck that runs through this pasture so we're 
I'm gonna go try to find him. See how we do. This literally is our uh, ranch we can hunt. Oh geez, I was shaking. That was fun, he's a good buck. We've walk, watched, uh, I don't know, like, luckily Brian and Eric were here because I would have been shooting 
everything we saw like, oh, that's a good buck, that's a good buck. Antelope are just so hard to judge, but for me, it's not about a score or about size. It's about if I look at it and get excited and it looks pretty, dude, I, and it's mature, like, that's what it's always been about for me, so. Definitely when I saw him, I was like, yeah. And I looked at Brian and he gave me the go ahead, so let's go see how, he, how big he is. Wow, what a cool hunt. Like, we saw this antelope earlier, just bedded out in this big field. And we drove the road down to look at another spot and we turned around, we were coming back to go do an evening hunt somewhere. And this big buck was just walking. He was trying to get onto another piece of property, I guess. But as soon as I saw him, I knew I wanted to shoot him because, man, it got me excited. And I looked at him through the binoculars and he looked beautiful. same pasture for the last four years. He's a smart buck. He's not the biggest one, but he's a cool buck. I would definitely be happy if we could get him. The very beginning of day number two, and he's right where you would expect him to be, right off the front porch. We're going to take a closer look, possibly meet him in person.
You got him. Well, the plan worked out beautifully. I was freaking shaking so bad though. Antelope aren't a huge animal. And when you get them at some distance, man, that reticle is just doing this number. I was trying to just try to calm my breathing. The good thing was he had no idea that we were here. And so I knew he wasn't going to go anywhere, which made it a lot easier for me to kind of try to settle down. We've literally been watching this buck. The very first year I ever saw him was uh, 2012. And he just runs this pasture. This is his home range. He's never left it. There's probably been six or seven different hunters that have tried to get this buck, and he's just smart. As soon as he hears anybody staying at the ranch house, he gets out of Dodge, goes on the other property, and uh, finally uh, we get to go meet Porch Buck. Worked nice out awesome. Shot, man. Worked out awesome. <laughs> what a shot, man. I know how excited you are to kill that buck. Dude. He has no, he's like so much history, man. I just told Eric, I said, dude, Brian would be so pumped to kill that bug. He has so much freaking history. Johnson's baby shampoo. That's the best. Dude, that's the secret to growing a good neck warmer. Do you see this? It's all see about the, the, the Johnsons. All natural. <laughs> so uh, we are done with the antelope hunt, guys. We came, we saw, and we conquered. As you can see, as you can see. Plus that cooler right there is completely full of antelope meat, which is gonna feed mine and Brian's family for a long time. So we are headed now down to the Gila, me and Eric. Brian's gotta go home, he's gonna go take care of the meat, get it packaged, get it shipped home. And me and Eric are headed down to the Gila National Forest to chase elk with our bows for uh, 24 days. Hopefully not 24 days, hopefully we can get it done before that. You ready? Potentially for 24 days. Dude, this is the hunt you've looked forward to, I think, the, like, since May, right? Yeah, since we found out we drew... Um, Turkey hunting. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I drew, what, one of three non-resident yeah. tags on this unit, so this will be my first time really hunting bull elk with a bow during the peak of the rut. I did kill a big bull, but it wasn't during the rut, so this is kind of, I'm a little more excited for this one because of the date, so it's September 15th through the 24th. Never been there before, so I don't know what to expect. Casey's You're in for a lot, dude. Guide. He's in for a lot. Yeah, we were turkey hunting when uh, the results came out and we found out that Eric drew the tag. And uh, we've been hyping him up at least, uh, about it ever since. But I, I ended up getting a tag for the first season, which is the first through the 14th, and then his hunt starts the second season, which is the 15th through the 24th. So that's where we're headed. Wish us luck. We had lots of luck on this hunt. Was it a success, Brian? Oh yeah, it might have been. Double thumbs up. How's that jumping jack? Dude, no other trailer would make it through that road. I guarantee it. And no other driver could probably pull that through that little stretch. So we are up here in the uh, Gila National Forest of New Mexico. Eric and I live in the hush life. We are up here for what could possibly be 24 days. We just wanted to show you guys uh, 
a rundown of our camp, basically. So we're just camped right off this road, which this road is takes you about two and a half hours on this bumpy damn road to get to where we are. We got the pickup that pulled the jumping jack trailer. This is uh, our accommodations. I had doubts. Eric was like, let's take the jumping jack. Let's take the jumping jack. And I was like, let's just take a tent. It'll be easier and throw it in the back of the truck. They don't have to haul anything. We've stayed in it for three nights and I am sold. This thing is amazing. Not only uh, is it an awesome tent, super comfortable, I'll show you the inside in a second, but it, when it folds down, it's like a flatbed utility trailer. And that's what we hauled all our Yeti coolers on, all three of them, and then our uh, dry food storage. Let me show you this jumping jack trailer. So, like I said, it folds down into like a little flat utility trailer, and then two minutes, maybe three, it takes, and you pop it right up, just like that. Super sturdy. This is just like canvas, like a wall tent. Um, and you come in, and uh, this is the setup. Eric, knowing Eric, took the big bed. This is like a double bed. It's a giant bed. Need Eric needs his space. And then uh, we got the lantern for in the mornings and at night. Uh, the table, which is so handy to have. Something a tent doesn't have is a nice table in the middle you can throw all your junk and gear when you get back every day this is my bed Pretty super nice. comfy oh yeah i've been uh pillow. taking this pillow so camping cute. and hunting for like 12 years my mom made it for me <laughs> thanks that's cute this is so much better than a 10 tons of room look at as you can see it's probably eight feet tall in the middle but this is the support system it's a little bit of an upgrade from our nevada camp right and, and I we had a nice tent. I went and bought a nice tent to take up there. Yeah, it was sweet. But you it's can't stand up. Us. It's been yeah. nice. It's been windy. It's been nice. And we're like, what? How many miles up this tiny, tiny? I was just road? saying it takes about two and a half hours to get up here. There's a couple turns where it almost didn't make it. This is the food that we brought. Lots and lots of snacks, guys. Oh, this is this is pink just Eric's. Heaven. This is just Eric's. Casey bought. A nice, <laughs> I bought pink. a loaf of bread. That's we all I got. Bread. But this is all Eric's snacks. No, don't lie, dude. Let's see. I'm, this is snack yeah. attack, by the way. This is what you got. I got trolls. Here's the Yeti. This thing is awesome. It stays cold for the longest period of time. Out of any cooler I've ever used, this is the cooler. Over here on the north wing, we have the cooking station. Where you can find me. You know, this is where Eric spends most of his time when we're back at camp. That's what I'm doing now. Uh, cooking food cooking to food. consume. 39 cents. 39 cents. This stuff is insta-lunch, dude. I swear it's flavored cardboard, but it's still pretty tasty. <laughs> but you're going to eat it. I'm going to eat it anyways. So this is where we cook. Um, obviously, we always take the uh, camp chefs with us. Oh, yeah. Got the striker just for boiling water because it takes, what, a minute and a half? Yeah, about a minute and a half. That is our elk camp. That's how we set it up. Plus, we are uh, capable of, which we will do if we can't, uh, find elk up here. We're gonna have to backpack in about three or four miles So we have all our backpacking gear that we can just throw on our packs and uh, Head in a ways so that's camp Hope you enjoyed it Middle We're enjoying it. You enjoying it. I'm enjoying it We're enjoying it guys. Anyways, wish us luck New Mexico Gila elk hunt and we just heard our first bugle we came to this spot last night just to glass and see what we could see and we saw a couple nice bolts down in this basin but uh I haven't seen anything this morning but bull just bugled down below us so we're gonna go try to get on them this is probably one of my top five favorite places in the world to hunt and I haven't been down here for a few years so it's gonna be fun Let's go try to find this pool.
passing boy and all of a sudden he's like 30 or 40 turkey vultures jumped up right down here. Now we'd come investigate, it smells like something's dead. There are a couple things that you can just count on when you're down here on uh, the Gila National Forest in September. A, you can count on seeing bulls most of the time, and you can count on getting rained on at least a couple times during a hunt. The monsoons roll through here in September. This is light compared to what I've seen it do. Sometimes it will just open up and it will rain for 45 minutes just hard. Harder than I've ever seen it. This is pretty light, but if you have the right equipment, you can still hunt in it. That's what we're trying to do. Hunting in the rain can be really successful. I think the rain knocks your scent down, makes everything a little quieter. Plus the animals don't mind it. They'll be out feeding around in this stuff. It feels good to them, so... We're gonna try to hunt through this one.
and we have heard nothing. We've been out in another part of the unit, and we've been getting into bulls there, but not a lot of action, so we thought we'd come over here and hopefully fire something up, but the good thing about it is we know this piece is no bueno. We don't have to come back. So we'll go find another piece. Look what this guy is doing. He just showed me this. It's pretty awesome. What's that? Right there at you. It's a 100% organic, natural wild onion. Check it out. The harvest is in full, Dang. full effect today. They're good too, man. First time I ever hunted down here, we were getting out of the truck and uh, my dad was down here with me and I kept smelling onions. I'm like, what the hell did you eat? Like, you reek of onions. He's like, nothing. Come to find out there's wild onions up here and you can smell them. But it's so fun when we're sitting out on the hill and uh, getting a patch of them. So we just dig a couple up, clean them up, pop them in our mouths and they're really sweet. So Super good. We were thinking, uh, we just got done with the antelope hunt came straight here to the elk hunt and uh, we brought one back strap and sent the rest with Brian to go home but uh, we brought one antelope back strap so uh, we're like let's try to uh, fry one up with uh, some uh, wild onions so. oh yeah that's a good solid one so we're gonna clean these onions we just picked and uh, I think the best way is just to break off the uh, end stems, pop off the top, and then you gotta peel it just like a normal onion. Get down to the good stuff. This is kind of a little guy, but I think if you cut the ends off. And then just take like a layer or two. I mean, you don't get much onion, but they're tasty. So we're gonna toss that in there. Get them all in there, and then we're gonna rinse them off. So, might take a little while, but it's all right. Our meat's marinating; that needs to sit in there for a little bit. So we got all the onions cleaned and uh, rinsed off. Look pretty good. I'll tell you this: it is pretty time-consuming uh, skinning them and then cleaning them, and you don't get much because they're so small. But I think there'll be plenty to give it. A natural onion flavor so we're just cooking on the rainier camp chef this is our go-to stove we take it everywhere uh, we love it because it has the griddle plus you can use a cast iron on this side but we're gonna we got some oil heated up throw them in Ooh, baby. The steaks have been marinating for about I don't know an hour which I would like to do a little longer, but we're starving, so we're gonna cook them up. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, the onions are still cooking, but I'm just gonna throw them right in with the onions, move the onions away so the, the steaks actually hit direct contact with the uh, cast iron and then just kinda move the onions around them. I cut these steaks pretty thin so they don't take very long, probably six minutes on medium. Um, the onions, me and Eric tried a couple, they're good. Alright guys, like me and Eric always say, just because you're in the middle of nowhere, which we really are in the middle of nowhere, you don't have to eat crap. You just have to come prepared, have some good food, get a camp chef, know how to use it, and uh, you'll always eat good. We're going to try this and see how it is. All right, time out. What? Time out? Yeah, if any of you guys have had antelope and you say it is nasty, you're wrong. 
if anyone has never had antelope, you need to try it because Casey just whipped up an awesome meal. Look at this meat. See how tender it is? Watch, watch, I'm gonna show you. Here's the thing, people, I grew up hearing the same thing. Antelope's terrible, it tastes like sagebrush, not worth shooting. So I never hunted antelope until like six years ago I started. By far my favorite meat. Um, anybody that's ever had it that was, that uh, the antelope was taken care of, that's the secret. It's all about how you take care of it right after you shoot it. Coolers. We had this thing on ice how fast after you shot it? 30 minutes after this thing hit the ground, it was quartered out, caped out in the Yeti cooler on ice. That's the secret. You can't throw them in the back of your truck. You can't even gut them and throw them in your truck and drive around for an hour. They'll go bad. Clean them as fast as you can. Get that hide off as fast as you can. Get them on ice. By far the best meat. My wife, she hands down her favorite meat. It's amazing. So tasty that I'm gonna finish my plate. There it is, about half gone. It's not gonna last long. Luckily, we have about two thirds of the backstrap left, so we're gonna have a uh, backstrap another night too. But uh, if you guys haven't tried antelope, you need to. All right, guys. We are being tested. We have moved our camp three separate times, trying to figure out where the elk were. We're hoping they're here. We got uh, told by one of the local guys that he'd seen a, a uh, group, or he'd seen 300 elk spread out through these flats about a week ago, and told us the reason why was because all the storms that these guys have gotten this spring have only come by this side of the mountain and the far side of the mountain. Me and Eric been up on the top, and it's just super dry up there, but all this stuff super lush so all the cows are hanging out down here so hopefully we uh will find them but we just hiked up to pretty much the tallest point around just so we can glass figure out what they're doing so hopefully this is where they're at
scared of them. Usually if you can get in front of an elk, like the general direction they're going, and then call, and they always come in. That bull's a hot, I don't know what the heck happened. We're gonna figure him out though, it's a sweet bull. Definitely wanna put my tag on that thing. All right, we watched big bull this morning. We got super close, it came to 80 yards. And then he backed toward us. <laughs> Went behind us and we spotted him coming up this ridge. So we're gonna go get up on the, the top of this. And hopefully he's bedded just over and he'll get up and come back over.
saw cows, but we could hear a bull raking in the back. Sure enough, we sat here for about 25 minutes. Bull comes out with more cows. Part of those cows go that way, he goes this way. I sneak down, range, dude. He's... He knows he got the best of me right there. Came out, I could see half his body. He was 70, probably 76. He was just past the tree I range, so I held high in the 70 yard bin. As soon as I released, dude, he turned like that. Arrow went right where he was standing. Shaky tree, what is it? Is it an elk rubbing? The elk rubbing his antlers. That's what you do when the elk hunting gets slow. You go and shake trees. Hear them? <laughs> Check it out. Oh, dude, a bunch just fell off. Yeah, that was a good shake there at the end. Look at that. Pine oh. nuts. Look at this. Pine nuts, pine nuts, pine nuts. Fresh organic pine nuts. We figured out if you take the cones off with your fingers, it's really messy. So you just shake the tree and you harvest your pine nuts. And now we're gonna go make some antelope backstrap encrusted with pine nuts. So we're on the harvest. Earlier today we came across the pine nut tree. Now my eyes are glued to the pine nut trees. And uh, we just been shaking the branches and picking them up off the dirt like a couple savages. <laughs> what are you gonna do with those, dude? Just living off the land, dog. Just living off the land. Working on the pine nut harvest. It's a lot of work, sticky fingers, a lot of time. There's probably a really fancy way to do this, but we don't know what it is. So we're going old school, old fashioned. Casey already chewed his up. We look like a couple squirrels over here in camp, sitting here for like an hour biting on these pine nuts. Here's how it works. So crack them and you end up with just a about a skittle sized pine nut, just like that. You can see my, look at the damage. I've got pruned up hands and full of uh, pine sap. We'll see how it works. All right, so yeah, we're gonna do antelope back traps uh, wrapped in bacon. But these are natural toothpicks that we just made. And then this is the, uh, hopefully turns out, pine nut encrusted back strap. So I just pressed it on there as hard as I can. Hopefully it stays. So you just put this on there. Just push it in. Hopefully this oil, we can get the oil hot enough on the camp chef that it will just cook it right, right on. on. Yeah. I'm guessing that those uh, pine nuts will crust up nice and brown. I don't know, they might all just fall off, we'll see. I wish they were a little bit drier, like dried them out for a few days. But we're all about now. We'll we're throw hungry. these on here too. Oh man. Maybe I'll wait on that one. <laughs> what do you think? Cross your fingers, hopefully it turns out. But this, the aroma after I crushed them up, I put some salt in there, so it might be a little bit salty, but the aroma is like really sweet. Pine nuts are sweet, so hopefully it will give it a sweet flavor. Ooh, ooh, saved it. All right, we're all done. We have a feast now. Casey decided to get some potatoes out. It's a good idea. I'm gonna snag some of those. Crispy tortilla already on the plate. Just so you know, this guy's obviously not from Idaho. Look at this, look at this pile of mashed potatoes. Hey, I got... That's like a, a <laughs> droplet of mashed potatoes. We don't have any butter. Well, we do have sour cream, but I'm not a fan. Casey's a fan of sour cream. So the pine nut encrusted back strap. I'm gonna load up one of those. With, uh, get some of these pine nuts on there. And one of these bacon back straps. Wow, those are tender. Serve it up. Casey's got me hooked on Sriracha Life. Sriracha Life. I'm still 
Look at that stuff. It looks amazing. Look at that. Some of that. Superb. <laughs> that is superb. That belongs on a menu somewhere. A menu somewhere, yep. Pine nut crusted antelope backstrap. Got it. All natural antelope. It tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, cut that part out, Eric, for sure. that bull last night. We just knew he was a giant. Obviously, he has 20, 30 cows. That's okay. I'm saving him for Eric. Eric's part. a few steps from making a big mistake, but he didn't, he didn't. I had one shooting lane, 30, 40 yards, stopped right at it. Did you get the film of him? He's a good bull. He must have caught part of our wind and he's right up here. But I think we should just keep putting the pressure on him while they're bugling like this. We'll get one. This is fun though.
we just had probably one of the most epic mornings of elk hunting I've ever been a part of. We've chased bulls from sunrise about 6.30 until about 10.45 they finally quit. But man, we were close. Could have shot a couple smaller ones, saw some giants. Rut is definitely on. This is how you road hunt in New Mexico, on the road.
done everything when it comes to elk hunting. I've called them, we've called them. We've chased pit bulls, we spotted pit bulls. I've just been gone way too long for my family not to bring something back. And uh, that's why we honest for the meat. We've seen a lot of young bulls. I think he just went down. I came here to just have an awesome time and learn and chase bulls and we've done it all. Plus, it sounds like we're gonna take some meat home, so. Day 14, man. Wow. Plus, Eric's next. Eric's son starts tomorrow, so. We can go chase big bulls again, but. Finally, man. The white dude. Put a hole right through him. Pretty rad. Looked like a good job. Yeah, that was fun. So <laughs> fun. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for being here. trying to find my bull and he's playing with rattlesnakes. But come check this out. Oh, he did not go far, man. Holy I smoked cow. him in the heart. Nice work. Eric's gonna thank me for this because we've been six miles deep and he was trying to get me to go chase bulls deeper. Like, dude, we can't get meat out of here. It's gonna be a a stretch to get it out of here before it goes bad. This mile from the truck. Shot a bull finally, second to last day, 13 days it took. Shot him right before dark last night, got him cleaned up, we packed out. We uh, skinned them out last night and cut them off and hung them up. And they are cool as cool can be. This is going to be amazing.
We set up in case he moved back to call. He's moving through the pond. He's had an opening 30 yards or less. I think I hit him a little back. He bedded instantly, which is good. And I just figured if I can get a second shot, I'd try. I was 25 yards, he stood up. Casey called, I missed. And uh, he turned quartering away hard and I got a second one in him. So. shooting these deep six this year for this elk hunt. I had one arrow with different fletchings. I told Casey, this is gonna be my number one. I told you to make it. <laughs> he did. But uh, <laughs> that thing still had enough, you know, to shoot through him, through those trees and into the dirt. Oh, it smells like I think it was a little far back, but I think it's a good hit. Lots of blood. <laughs> and uh, got a second one in him, I think. So. You got a little blood on, blood on my nose. nose. <laughs> Dude, that's better than I thought. The secret to a successful elk hunt? Meat and cheese. Meat and cheese, Casey's favorite snack. It's a combo, you get best of both worlds. You get, the better thing would be if they would give you in this package a piece of meat and like a potato, like a big french fry. <laughs> Potatoes, but cheese is good. You need your carbs? Carbs and protein. I'm not about the sausage life. I'm about chocolate and crackers, peaches, tuna, Mountain Ops. Guys, we are sitting here. It's opening day of my hunt. We've been hunting hard with Casey. It took us 13 days. And uh, we're sitting here enjoying some snacks on opening morning, listening to these bulls bugle in these canyons. And we're not chasing them because I just shot one. This is definitely, me and Eric have had many conversations before. I kind of get choked up when I talk about this, but this has always been our dream is to uh, capture hunts and share them with people because we love it and we're so passionate about it. And it, and it, sometimes I think you guys think it's just hunting and having fun, and it is. Like, hunting is fun and we love it and we're passionate about it, but it's a lot of hard work to try to film this stuff and be gone from our families for, you know, weeks on end. And it's hard on them, but... We do it because we're very passionate about what we're doing, and uh, we love it, and we want to share it with you guys, but we just want to tell you guys thanks for watching us yeah. and giving us the opportunity. We hope we make good stuff, and you guys are entertained, and you learn something, and and uh, maybe you're not a hunter, but uh, you guys watch us, and you understand it, and that's cool. So, thank you guys. Eric. Thank you guys. Thank you this little guy, my friend right now. <laughs> what is that? It's going to be a tapeworm, dog. beautiful butterfly one day, probably. <laughs> it's a tapeworm. It's going to get inside you and take over. No, really, though, like Casey said, I've been filming hunts for a long time. We stayed up last night talking until we fell asleep, basically, about what we're doing with making videos. We've had a f couple people recognize us here in these tiny, tiny towns in New Mexico and, and just tell us that they enjoy our videos, and that means so much to us. That means so much, just to hear that. So all the nice comments, all the views, subscriptions, thanks guys.
this is uh, the last place I saw him go down. I could just see his angler tops running down here. He wasn't running, but he was just kind of just going downhill. He can't go uphill for sure. He's super sick. The crazy thing is, there's no blood yet. Just gonna stay on his tracks, giving him a, a couple hours. And uh, we think we heard him coughing up down here. So we're just gonna go slow, go find him. Actually, probably gave him three hours because we've been hiking around for about an hour. There's literally like zero blood on the trail, but we could follow his tracks and we got sidetracked. There's so many elk tracks in here. And uh, Casey thought it'd be a good idea to come up here and start over. And we heard him coughing like down in this direction and the tracks I was on took us away from here. So we came back. Sure enough, Casey came down in here probably 80 yards and uh, jumped him. This is where he's been laying. He's hurt bad. I think we just need to give him time. He ran downhill again. There's no way he's going uphill. He's hurting too bad, so it's just a matter of time now. No way. Jeez. No way. Are you serious? He's down. Oh. Oh. He's down. His head's down. Oh. Look at dude. Look at that. There he is. There he is. Looks dead. Did it, dude. Me and, me and Eric have done this a time or two, man. Wow, I can't believe it. Oh, I'm getting that flush feeling again. Dude, I've got the goosebumps. Look at the goosebumps. I just grew an inch on my beard, I swear. We found the second arrow. We jumped him. Just like Casey said, we've been through this together. And we thought we did everything right, and we did on Casey's hunt. And we knew once we jumped him, that might be all it took to get him up and to kill him. And uh, with the help of Casey, we tracked him down here, and there he is dead in the bottom, just like they always do. It's got luck.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap. We are just getting back to the truck with the last load from Eric's bowl. Uh, what do I got? I've got the hind quarter deboned, the head and the antlers. And I've got the other hind quarter and some neck meat. And uh, this is our fourth trip between our both of our bulls packing meat out. And this by far was the heaviest, but that's all right. We saved the heaviest. Saved the life. best for last. Well, that was an amazing uh, oh trip to this beautiful state of New Mexico. We uh, made a lot of memories. Had a lot of adventures, coming home heavy with lots of meat. We hope you guys enjoyed the show. Hopefully you guys have success in uh, your hunting and fishing adventures. It's always a success when you make memories and, and uh, have a good time. Hazards on. Why? What is, what is wrong? Are we, do we have a flat tire like those guys? What's wrong? Nothing. Just saving some fuel. Just saving on fuel, you know? I'm always thinking about being greener and, and uh, you know, what's best for the earth and it's don't use fuel because we don't have any fuel. Oh. We ran out of fuel and we're coasting into the gas station. Right, look at this. We still might have to walk and get fuel. We had a mile till the exit mile. and we coasted. Dude, don't stop. <laughs> just just take take the dirt. We uh we plan to get off back there and there's a a gas station a little like convenience store and stuff, but it was closed down. Oh, you just ran a stop sign. Illegal. Oh, Bad we're, move. we're definitely not gonna make it up the hill. Can you push us? I'll definitely push us. All that, you can't see it, but we got about 300 pounds at least of elk meat on the jumping jack and it's definitely giving us a, giving us a push. Uh oh. Casey's NASCAR status. Oh no, we're gonna block the entrance. So basically oh, now, wish. Eric has to walk up there and buy a gas can. And some fuel. And some fuel. Damn it. Who <sighs> makes a whole loop like that? That was pretty good. I'm, Exit. I thought, that was better than I thought. I thought we were gonna have to ask for help. We can take care of it from here. <laughs> Just more more uh, adventures on this journey, that's for sure. I haven't ran out of gas since like high school. <laughs>